This is Twit. Uh, so tell us about Zen. What's the 30,000 foot view? What, what problem are you solving when you're reaching for Zen? You know, it's all about virtualization to a large degree, but not only. Uh, we also have a number of projects within the Xen project around Xen and sometimes also incubation of new ideas. So, for example, um, we have the hypervisor sub project, um, a project to deliver drivers for Windows. We do have a project which looks at embedded and automotive applications as well. And a number of unikernel related projects, such as Mirage OS, which is a unikernel which came out of Cambridge University, and uh, a relatively new project called Unicraft, which is basically an SDK to create custom unikernels for different runtime environments, for Xen, containers, uh, native OSs, and at some point also bare metal. So basically, it's it's like I described in the top of the show, right? Which is that it's 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 a way of allowing an operating system to think it actually owns all of the hardware when, in fact, it doesn't actually do that. Uh, isn't that a great expense to be able to do that? Um, no, not today. Um, uh, there was quite a bit of overhead in the early days, uh, but today most CPUs have acceleration, um, and so, so the cost is pretty much, I mean, it's primarily in terms of memory and disk footprint, you know, because you have additional operating systems running in each VM, but you would have that anyway um, if you, you know, if you ran on additional machines. So at the end of the day, you know, you you, you, you trade off a bit of performance for um, a, and have less um, energy costs, space in data centers, all those kind of things. And similar dynamics also play out in um, other market segments, such as embedded and automotive. You keep mentioning automotive, but I can't imagine I'd be wanting to run multiple operating systems on my car uh, audio system, right? What, 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 do you, what do you mention automotive for? What, what is that about? Well, this is kind of really interesting, and it also surprised me um, how this happened, um, because when I came into the Xen community around 2011, um, at that time there were attempts to bring uh, Xen to... Um, laptops as well as mobiles. Um, on the laptop front, um, we have operating systems such as CubeOS, which are built on top of Xen. It's a very security-focused um, uh, uh, open source project. But you know the, the momentum around cars happened only three, four years ago. Um, we basically were at a developer summit. Um, it was Global Logic at the time. They just, you know, submitted a talk with this amazing demo where they were really showing um, the infotainment uh, side running in one VM and um, basically some car functionality, such as like the little camera which you have at the back to park and things like that in other VMs. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you look at a car today. Um, a high-end car has about 750 CPUs in it, so you can see where the whole consolidation play comes in. Wait, a modern car has 750 CPUs? Are you talking, really? Really? Yeah, well, microcontrollers, right? So right. they're technically CPUs, right? Right. Yeah, and I'm it's surprised about that as well, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then when you talk to some of those guys, they start to have interesting challenges, right? Because a lot of the stuff is distributed over the car. I mean, some of it is centralized. But if something goes wrong, you know, then, you know, you might have a piece, piece of electronics somewhere which isn't easily accessible um, and so on and so forth. So, you know, um, I was really surprised about that whole, you know, how how this is happening and um but it's kind of cool and it it's also forcing me and other you know members of the community to to address new challenges and problems <laughs> 